Hangzhou, China in 2016 and 2019, respectively. Uh, he is currently working toward a PhD degree in the uh, Center for Bioelectronic Systems, Virginia Tech. His uh, res current researches are in the areas of multi-level converters uh, and hybrid DC circuit breakers. Jim. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jian Liu. Today, my presentation topic is a flying capacitor hybrid module multi-level converter with uh, reduced number of sum modules and uh, power losses. And the outlines uh, introduction and followed by the basic uh, operation principles of the flying capacitor hybrid module multi-level converter and then the comparison performance comparison between the traditional modular multi-level converter and the FCHMC and uh, the experimental results. Finally, is the summary and conclusion. So nowadays, uh, the two-level converter is uh, one of the most uh, popular approach in the low voltage applications. And uh, because it's very simple and straightforward, and how, if we want to go to the higher voltage level using the low voltage device, then we can use the multi-level converter, such as a three-level converter, NPC, and a flying capacitor. If we want to go to even higher voltage, medium voltage, we can use the CHB cascaded um, full bridge converter and the AMPC converter. However, the traditional multi-level converter has some uh, limitations of the high, very high number of levels because the um, parasitic inductance and uh, then the proposing of the modular multi-level converter fundamentally changed the way to build the medium voltage and high voltage converters because it has um, it can change the number of the sub modules to be used in arbitrary voltage rating. And uh, the basic MMC working principles could be shown here. It has one upper and arm and one lower arm, and uh, it has a series connected sub full hard bridge sub modules. If we insert and bypass the sub modules, we can create the sinus, the multi-level wave in the AC output voltage. And if we change the number of the modules, then we can use the, it to be arbitrary DC bus voltage. So the basic um, um, benefits of the MMC include the no AC harmonics because it has a large number of the sub modules, good modularity and scalability, and also the very high reliability. However, it also has some disadvantages, such as a higher conduction loss compared to the two-level converter because the device number is doubled. And large volume due to the submodule capacitor, which needs to uh, suppress the voltage capacitor, voltage ripple, and very complicated control structures. And then the question is, is it possible to leverage the benefits of the MMC and the conventional multi-level converter? Yes, um, in the previous um, CPS conference, we have introduced the concept of the hybrid MMC family. It is derived from the three-level MPC converter combined with the chaining structure used in the MMC. For example, if we replace the uh, deep three pair of switches with the chaining structure, we can get obtain the three kinds of the topologies as shown here, HMC one to three, it has a full high voltage device which operate in the line frequency and the, the chaining structure which operate in the high switching frequency to get the uh, to uh, shape the AC output voltage. And uh, if we introduce the uh, midpoint voltage compared to the traditional voltage, it's successful uh, compared to the traditional MMC, it's possible to reduce the 50% sub module number reduction so that uh, this topology could save the uh, increase the power density compared to the traditional MMC. And today, um, I want to introduce another um, type of HMC, which comes from the flying capacitor, that uh, three-level flying capacitor, the FCC converter. And uh, the idea is using uh, the chaining structure to replace the device, like for example here, Q3 and Q4, with the MMC structure. 
and the left device Q1, Q2 is still the high voltage IGBT stack based on the series device. And some people, and the basic uh, um, uh, operation is different from the, MC, uh, the, the FCC. This high voltage IGBT stack only works in, also in the line frequency. And the features of the FCHMC include the no DC commutation capacitor compared to the uh, AMPC type. And it does no DC and AC coupling, which means there is no modulation index requirement. And it has a line frequency operation of the high voltage IGBT stack. Besides, it has a natural ZVS and ZCS of the high voltage stack. So it greatly uh, reduce the challenge of the series device because people doesn't worry, has a concern of the voltage sharing of this high voltage IGBT stack. And also it can re achieve the 50% number, some module reduction compared to the traditional MMC. And then I will just explain the principle to you, it, um, to discuss what's uh, the, base, the detailed features of this converter. So the basic single phase operation of this FCHMC, it has two states, uh, which P state and N state, which is determined by the polarity of the AC voltage. When the AC voltage is positive, which is a P state, the Q1 is turned on and Q2 is turned off. So the upper chaining is connected between the positive terminal and the AC terminal. So the voltage is shown here and the lower chaining is connected in series with this flying capacitor. So to support the full DC bus voltage, which is this voltage um, expression. And uh, in the end state, the Q1 is turned off and Q2 is turned on. So we can have the uh, upper chaining is connected in parallel with this flying capacitor. And this lower chaining is connected between the AC and the negative bus voltage. So if we all uh, still set the, D, the flying capacitor voltage as half BTC, then we can see the maximum chaining voltage stress is reduced from traditional MMC, which is full DC bus voltage to only half DC bus voltage. So it means it can achieve the 50% number uh, some module number reduction. And then um, I want to go to, if we have the single phase operation, then we can go to the three phase configuration and uh, to discuss some about the current allocation. So uh, we know that the, for the single phase, the voltage, the, the state is determined by the voltage polarity. So for the three phase, there are six different combinations which has a different polarity. So for example, during zero to pi over three, uh, VA is positive, VB, VC is positive and while VB is negative. So the P state for phase A and phase C and N state for the phase B. And similarly, we can also get all the other left three, five states. And if we focus on the DC, positive DC bus connection, we can observe that in each segment, either two phases are connected in parallel to, uh, to support the full DC bus or it only has one phase to support the DC bus. So in order to maintain a constant positive, total positive DC bus current, we just uh, proposed a trapezoidal current uh, for the three phase that positive DC bus terminal. So that the sum of them is a constant value. It means that we don't need any DC side filter to, to make sure there's um, uh, the DC bus current constant. And now if we have a trapezoidal uh, DC, uh, D positive DC terminal current, then we can to think about how to design the corresponding chaining current as well as the flying capacitor current. So firstly, we go to the P state. As we see, uh, this P state connection is shown here. The upper chaining is connected to the AC terminal, which means it has exactly same current as AC output. So it cannot change. And the flying capacitor is connected in series with the lower arm, lower chaining. So it, the, the current is the difference between this trapezoidal current and also the AC output current. So it's the current looks like this way. It's a little bit uh, weird, but yeah, that's the difference. And uh, considering the symmetrical current configuration to make sure that the flying capacitor is balanced over one cycle, so we can easily to design the opposite shape and then 
to according to this KCL uh, relationship, we can we can also derive the current pattern for the upper and lower arm, uh, the lower chainings for over one cycle. So it's, this is the whole um, current pattern of the single phase FCHMC over one cycle. And for phase B and phase C, it has exact the same shape, just with 120 degree phase shift. As I mentioned, um, the one important aspect of this um, of this topology is it has a soft switching of the high voltage IGB stack. So as so here is um, um, P state, which is uh, Q1 is turned on and Q2 is turned off. Uh, because Q1 is turned on, the current equals to exactly the DC bus current. And we have the designed trapezoidal current, which start from zero and end zero at pi. So it means that this uh, device has a ZCS. And for the lower device Q2, it has the voltage across this device is exactly the AC voltage. So when it's turned off, um, the voltage starts from zero. So when we use the series device for this uh, for this high voltage IGB stack, you don't need to worry about the high DVDT when it turns off. And then the voltage sharing challenge will be much easier compared to the two level converter. And at end stage, the voltage of the upper Q1 is also the AC voltage and Q2 is also trapezoidal current. So if the modulation index and the power factor changes, um, the, um, the shape of the current does not change and only the, the, the amplitude of this IDC changes when the modulation and the power factor changes. So it still keeps this ZCS, um, this feature and also the AC voltage, only the amplitude changes. So it means that the, it has this topology has a natural ZVS and ZCS, the soft switching at any power factor and the lower loss switching loss and the lower DVDT. So it has easier series connection. And if we further modify this trapezoidal current to make sure there's some turn off uh, tricks, it's also possible to apply the thyristor into the to replace the IGBT so that we can further reduce the conduction loss and also the construction cost. Okay, so here is a basic um, high level single phase FCHMC control strategy. Um, the control target includes the AC output control, uh, which can comes from like the PQ control to give the output of the AC current set reference. And uh, uh, for the balancing, like the chaining energy balancing as well as the flying capacity energy balancing, it gives the output of this trapezoidal current, this amplitude. And then we can synthesize them to get the corresponding uh, chaining current reference, which goes to the re current regulator. And the combined with this uh, voltage feed forward uh, calculation, we can get the uh, chaining voltage reference and then go to the multi-level modulation and some, some module level balancing, we can get the um, PWM signal of each um, sub module. So here is a basic um, comparison between the traditional MMC and the FCHMC. And here I just use the specific case using the third order harmonic voltage injection. And you can see this traditional MMC has a full DC bus voltage and the FCHMC has half VDC. And this is a current for the MMC and the FCHMC, which has a similar RMS value. And here is we integral the um, instantaneous power using this equation because the, um, the, the energy ripple directly determines the capacity energy storage requirement. Compared to the MMC, uh, this peak value energy ripple could be reduced to only 42%. And here is the summary of the comparison at the unity power factor. Uh, we can, the total voltage device rating could have reduced from one per unit to only uh, 0 0.75 per unit. And uh, we have saved around 50% number of some modules, around 40% energy storage save and, uh, and uh, around 20% power losses. So here is um, some higher level to modification um, from the traditional MMC to the FCHMC. We just use example of the MMC has only two half bridge submodules per arm 
and each one has uh, two half VDC rated devices and half VDC rated capacitor. If we want to change your FCHMC, we can firstly remove the one, uh, two sub modules, and this one could be totally removed. And uh, this one for the upper one, we just change move this device to here as a high voltage stack, and this device to here, and this uh, sub module capacitor to here. So it's equivalent, uh, we can save around one quarter sub module number if we go to the system level. And some people may still have a concern about the uh, flying capacitor. Actually, there's already some mature technology for the medium voltage capacitor, which has a, a compact size and the insulation application insulation capability. So for the medium voltage application, I think this FCHMC is still uh, feasible to uh, achieve the higher power density. And uh, okay, another point I want to mention that the FCHMC is a bidirectional topology which uses the uh, IGBT. Actually, if we want to use a uh, unidirectional rectifier operation, which the, is always from the AC to the DC side, it's even possible to use the diode instead of the uh, IGBT because this diode is always to absorb the current. So it can even lower the cost and the volume because it does not need any gate driver unit as well as the auxiliary power supply. And it has can operate at any power factor. When the power factor changes, you can see here the upper and lower changing voltage does is always look like this way. And this only this amplitude of the trivial current, which is a diode current, changes. So it can operate at any power factor and it's able to support the grid and compensate the reactive power because it, it has a non unity power factor operation. So uh, the basic uh, some typical application that it can be used as a front end converter of the more drive application, or it can be used in the centralized active front end converter in the EV charging station with a step down operation, which can eliminate the low frequency transformer in the existing um, charging stations. So here is the experimental uh, verification of this um, topology. And uh, here we use uh, two sub modules per arm, and uh, each arm sub module is one kV four V sub module, and we use the four point five kV IGBT to represent the high voltage IGBT stack, and we use a DSP plus FPGA based controller, and the current loop power supply to support the auxiliary power for the whole system, and here is the test result for the single phase FCHMC. And the DC bus voltage is 1.6 kV and the modulation index 0.9. So from top to bottom is the uh, up and lower chain current and AC current. And this is a one um, floating DC link capacitor voltage. So it's balanced well. And this is showing the, um, the Q1, the device voltage and the current. So the current is trapezoidal, it has a ZCS and the voltage is sinusoidal and it also has a ZBS. And we also do some dynamic changes of this modulation index that changes from 0 0.8 to 1.2. Uh, it can exceed one because we have the full bridge sub modules. And uh, you can see before, so after this transient, so it takes several cycles for the current to be stable, but, but the AC output voltage is very good. And um, before and after the transient, the ZVS and the ZCS is always maintained for the high voltage device. Okay, so here is the summary and the conclusion. Uh, in this presentation, um, uh, FCHMC concept is introduced. It leverages the benefits of the traditional multi-level converter and the MMC converter. It has can save the 50% sub module number compared to the traditional MMC, and it can save the 40% capacity energy storage and 20% conduction losses. And uh, the challenges of the series devices in the high voltage stack becomes easier because the line frequency switching and the ZVS, ZCS operation. The FCHMR is the rectified version with a lower cost and it has, does not have any power uh, factor limitations. So thank you for your attention.